What is going on, amazing people? It's Medicosis Perfect Netus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Continuing our general chemistry quick review playlist. In the last videos, we talked about how to read graphs, how to know if two entities are directly proportional or inversely proportional. We talked about significant figures and the scientific notation. As for today, it's time for dimensional analysis. For example, how do I convert the speed from kilometers per hour into meters per second? Mastering dimensional analysis is key to excel in chemistry, physics, biology, and others. Let's start by answering the two questions of the previous video. Can you add this number to this number and report your results in the appropriate number of significant figures? Please pause and try to answer this yourself. Let's do this, people. The first order of business is to align those decimal points together. So 52.36 plus, here's my point, 0, 3, 5, 7, 1. Do the addition. This is 1, this is 7, this is 11. So I have 4 plus 3, 7 point. 2 plus 0 is 2, and here is the 5. Am I done? No! I need to report my final answer in the appropriate number of significant figures. How many significant figures do I have here? 1, 2, 3, 4. How about here? I have four significant figures. This zero is not significant. So therefore, I need to report my answer in four significant figures. So it becomes five, two, seven. Should I say one? No, be careful because after the one, there is seven. It is 52.72. The next question, multiply these two numbers together. This is a meter, of course, and give me the answer in the appropriate number of significant figures. Please pause. Let's do this. You need to multiply both of these. Okay, so first, let's align everything like this. Okie dokie. Let's do it. What do you do? You multiply the M value. So 3.5 times 5 gives me 17.5. And then what should I do? The base remains 10. And then you add the exponents. 3 plus 2 is 5. When you multiply a meter by a meter, what do you get? Meter squared. Am I done yet? Oh, heck no. Why not? Because remember that my M value has to be between 1 and 10. This is greater than 10, so it's not appropriate, which means I have to convert this into 1.75. When I turn backwards once, I need to increase the exponent, so it becometh 10 to the 6th power. So the 5 will increase by 1 to become 6. Am I done yet? Heck no. Why not? How many significant figures do I have here? Two. How about here? Also two. But here I have three, which is not cool. Which means I need to make this number into two significant figures, which means 1.8 times 10 to the sixth power square meters. And that's your correct answer. There you go. You multiply these 17.5. Well, this cannot be the m value. It has to be between 1 and 10. So I convert it into 1.75 and adjust the exponent. Okay. How many significant figures? Two, which means this has to be two significant figures as well. Now, another question. On to today's topic, dimensional analysis. Can we convert one liter into milliliters? Here are the rules. Here are the steps that we need to follow. Number one, write down the number that you want to convert from, which is the one liter. I'm starting with the one liter, and I want to convert from one liter into milliliters. So I write the one liter first, and then write the multiplication sign. Amazing. Then you need to write down a conversion factor, i.e. a ratio, whose numerator and denominator are equal in quantity. They have the same value, but the measuring unit is different. Of course, one liter is the same as 1000 mLs, which means the entire conversion factor ratio has to equal 1. Why do I put it like this? Because we need to cancel the liter with the liter. How do I do this? In your lovely conversion factor, what you are converting to should go on top. I'm converting to milliliters. I should put the milliliters upstairs. But what you're converting from the liter should go downstairs. Why? So that this downstairs liters can cancel with this upstairs liters. Cancel the liter with the liter and then do the math. 1 times 1000 equals 1000. The liters are gone. I am left with mLs, so 1 liter equals 1,000 mLs. Do not forget to write the correct measuring unit. Your answer should include the numerical value 
and the measuring unit. Here's another question for you. Can you convert 36,000 ml into liters? Please pause and try to answer this yourself. Okay, let's do it. Here is 36,000 ml. I start with it. The given has to be written first. I start with what I'm converting from, and then I add the lovely multiplication sign. Then what? Invent your conversion factor. I know that one liter is 1,000 ml. Okay, I want to cancel this ml with something. So what I'm converting from the ml goes on the bottom, like this. What I'm converting to, which is the liter, goes upstairs, like this. Cancel the milliliter with the milliliter. Cancel these three zeros with these three zeros. Do the math. 36 times 1 equals 36 liters. Here is the conversion factor again. What you're converting from? Downstairs. The unit that you're converting to? Upstairs. Why? Because I want to cancel this with this. Do you want a different method? Sure. If I tell you to convert 2 liters into mLs and you do not have pen and paper, can you do it? Sure. I am converting from a big value, which is a liter, into a smaller entity, which is a milliliter. When you go from big to small, you multiply. Multiply by how much? You know that one liter has 1,000 milliliters, so you multiply by 1,000. 2 times 1,000 equals 2,000 mLs. Bingo, we're done. We can do it the other way around. Suppose that you have 6,500 mLs. How many liters is that? 6,500 milliliters. And I want to go to liters, so I divide. I divide the 5,600 or the 5,600 by 1,000. So you get 5.6 liters. Why do I need to know this? Because I can just do the dimensional analysis. I'll tell you why. Because there are many students who are older than 20 who know that one liter contains a thousand milliliters. But then when you ask them, I have 7.8 liters of water. How many mLs are there? They cannot do it without dimensionals. Oh, oh just, just give me one second. Let me grab my iPad and Apple Pencil to do the math for it. Oh, shut the French toast up. You multiply by a thousand. That's it. We're done. Here is another question. If the volume and the mass of a substance is one liter and one kilogram respectively, please calculate the density of that substance in grams per ml. Please pause and try to do this yourself. Let's go. So let's get the density first. You know that density equals mass over volume. And what's the mass that I have here? One kilogram over one liter. Amazing. Which makes the density one kilogram per liter. Do I need the answer in one kilogram per liter? Oh, heck no. I want grams per ml. Therefore, dimensional analysis time. I start with what I have, one kilogram per liter. And then what? Well, I'm trying to cancel this liter with something. So let me put one liter upstairs. That's amazing. How many mls do you have here? I have 1000 mls. And I have successfully canceled those liters together. Now let's cancel the kilogram. So put it downstairs so that this kilogram can cancel with this kilogram. I know that one kilogram is 1,000 grams. Beautimus. And then what? This 1,000 will cancel this 1,000. And you just do the simple math. You end up with one gram per ml. So it's the same one. Oh, isn't that interesting? Yeah, it is. It'll tell you why. Because one kilogram has a thousand grams and one liter has a thousand milliliters. So it's like multiplying by a thousand upstairs and downstairs. But wait, we're not done yet. Look at how this is written. Two significant figures. So my answer has to be 1.0 grams per ml. If you want some colors, here are the colors. Get the equation. Give me the density. One kilogram per liter. And then the lovely conversion factor. Another conversion factor. And boom, you have the answer. Yet another question question. If this car, which is very old school, traverses, another old school word, a distance of 200 kilometers in a duration of four hours, please calculate its speed in meters per second and then round off to four significant figures. Please pause and try to answer this yourself. Let's go. I have a speed which equals what? Distance over time. Okay, what was the distance here? The distance was 200 kilometers. And what was the time? It was four hours. Do the simple math and you get 50 
kilometers per hour. Do I need my answer in kilometers per hour? No, I need meters per second. Enters dimensional analysis. Here is 50 kilometers per hour. Amazing. How do you cancel the kilometer? You put it downstairs and then you put a thousand meters upstairs. So I can cancel this with this. Very cool. How can you get rid of the hour? Well, this requires two steps because I'm going from hour not to minutes, but to seconds. So first you put one hour upstairs and then you know that one hour is 60 minutes. Very cool. And then what else? You cancel the minute. So you put the minute upstairs here and you know that one minute has 60 seconds. Very nice. Minute will cancel the minute. Hour will cancel the hour. The rest is just simple math. We can cancel this zero with this zero and this zero with this zero. So you get 500 on top over 36 at the bottom. What's the measuring unit upstairs? Meter. And what's the measuring unit downstairs? Seconds. 500 over 36 is 13.8888888 whatever 9. But we want just four significant figures. So here is one, here is two, here is three, here is four. But since it's followed by an eight, which is five and up, this eight has to be rounded into a nine. So the final answer is 13.89 meters per second. You can also write this as 13.89 meters times second power negative one because I raised the second from the denominator into the numerator. And there you go, the answer in colors. Please pause and review. Oh, by the way, you can download these beautimous notes on my website. Next, old school currencies. If one franc can be exchanged for one and a half US dollars, how much is this shirt or t-shirt in US dollars? This is 20 francs. Okay, I wanna pay in dollars. How much should I pay? Please pause and try to answer this yourself. Easy peasy. Start with the given. Start with what you're converting from. 20 francs. And then what? What you're converting from should go at the bottom of your conversion factor ratio. So I know that one franc is one and a half US dollars. You cancel the franc with the franc. And then 20 times 1.5 equals 30. 30 what? The dollar. 30 US dollars. Which actually makes sense because 30 is one and a half greater than the 20. Pause and review. There is a different method to do this. One franc will give us one and a half US dollars. Therefore, 20 francs equal how many dollars? unknown. So it's my x. See what I did there? And then you do some cross multiplication, some scissors action. 1 times x equals 20 times 1 and a half. x equals 20 times 1 and a half is 30. 30 what? Well, it has to be just like here, US dollars. Frank with Frank, US dollars with US dollars. 30 US dollars. Same answer, different method. Let's take it to the next level. Have you ever been to a hospital before or watched a movie about the hospital? You know the ECG or the EKG? Yeah, it looks like this. Oh yeah, I remember that. What in the world does this have to do with the dimensional analysis? Let me tell you. First, some facts about the EKG. If you look close in the EKG paper, you will see big boxes. Each big box has 25 small box. So if I look at the length, it has five small squares. If I look at the width, it has five small squares. If I look at the area, each big box has 25 small boxes because five times five is 25. Easy stuff. If I told you that the duration of each big box is about 200 milliseconds or 0.20 seconds, i.e. 0.2, i.e. one fifth of a second, how much time do you think will be in the small box? Well, one fifth of that. So 200 divided by five is 40 milliseconds. If I get a measuring tape, five millimeters from here to here, just one millimeter from here to here. And then doctors use some crazy method to calculate your heart rate on your EKG. They put 300 on top. It never changes. It's always 300 on top. And they count the number of big boxes between the beats, between one beat and the next beat. And voila, this will give the doctor your heart rate. I don't get it. It's time for some dimensional analysis. You know that heart rate is the number of beats per minute. How many times does your heart beat in every minute, right? Right. So minute is downstairs and the beat is upstairs. 
I'm with you. And you know that one minute has 60 seconds. Amazing. And you know that one second will take five big boxes because the length of each big box is a fifth of a second, which means you need five big boxes to give me just one second. Oh yeah, I can get that. Now cancel the second with the second, go to hell. The minute is here, the beat is here. What's left is to multiply 60 times 5, you get 300. And downstairs, the number of big boxes between the beats. This will give you the heart rate. You're not convinced yet? Okay, if this is an actual EKG, the distance between one beat and the next beat is four big squares. Can you please calculate the heart rate of this patient? Please pause. It's actually pretty easy. Now I know the 300 rule, I put 300 upstairs. What's downstairs? The number of big boxes between two successive beats. And here we have four. 300 over 4 is 75. 75 what? Beats per minute. This patient's heart rate is 75 beats per minute, which is actually normal because the normal heart rate is between 60 and 90. But my professor said 60 to 100. That's why he's a professor. He's not a doctor. Speaking of the heart and doctors, if you're struggling with cardiac pharmacology, if you want to learn about the antiarrhythmics, the antihyperlipidemics, the antihypertensives, the antianginal medications, you can download my cardiac pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. Question of the day. If one soap bar could be traded for three toothbrushes, how many toothbrushes do I need to trade for seven soap bars? Let me know the answer in the comment section. After these four videos of introduction, in the next video we'll start actual chemistry. So please subscribe, smash like, hit the bell, click the join button, choose the highest tier to gain instant access to more than 300 premium videos. You can support my channel here or here, go to my website to download my notes, cases and courses, or if you want me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.